Hello traders, Gary Wagner here just after 1 o'clock in Honolulu, 6 o'clock in New York. It is Friday. Happy Aloha Friday as we say on the islands. December the 8th, 2017 and this is the daily report for gold and silver. This was a bad week for gold. Gold suffered severe losses throughout the week closing down about $2.60 at $12.50. But the key is at the beginning of the week, it was trading at approximately $12.80. We've seen quite a decline. Silver also trading under pressure, still under $16, up fractionally about five cents on the day at $15.87. That is the close. US dollar in essence unchanged. And Bitcoin, after having a phenomenal upside swing yesterday, declined by about $1,100 per Bitcoin to close back at $15,730. Traders, now for the third week, we have seen gold pricing decline, although this week has been the most intense from about $1,280, which was the high of the week, and closing very, very near a 78% retracement. Currently, we have gold futures. This is basis February, trading off about $2.90 at $1,250.20. And traders, you can really see how this selling accelerated once the market broke below the 200-day moving average. Of course, we broke below the 50-day moving average late last week, and then the 200-day moving average just a few days ago. We had this down day that came in. We had a day where we closed just underneath the 200-day moving average. And then, of course, we had yesterday's activity, which was extreme. Although it closed well off of the lows, we still saw the damage that came into the market. When we actually go and look at our daily chart that is composed of spot pricing, you can see that that is actually trading up about $1.25. The key is, is this is the second time this week that we have seen spot go up and futures trade lower. And traders, throughout the week, we have talked about the fact that silver has definitely been declining at a greater percentage rate than we have seen in gold. We're looking at our daily silver chart. This is standard bar chart format. Futures are trading up today, up almost six cents, but still below $16 at 1586. The key is, is whether or not we have closed just above the 78% retracement level of 1581. Market is currently at 1586. And the question is whether or not silver pricing can maintain or hold. If not, I believe that it is destined to go to about $15 to 1512 based upon these lows that were achieved in July. Now that also corresponds to gold when gold was trading in July and hit this bottom. In this case, I believe it was around 1203. And traders, in terms of the precious metals markets, as we spoke about a little bit yesterday, it has been palladium that has been the superstar of these metals, actually taking out the price of platinum just the other day with platinum closing off 887. We have palladium, which did break above 1,000, back below it at $998.40. You can see that it did find support just the other day at the 50-day moving average. It has been on an extended rally and above the 50-day moving average. And traders, of course, one of the reasons that gold has been under so much dramatic pressure has been this exceptional risk on environment, the move in U.S. equities that has been so prevalent since the presidential election back in November of last year. In fact, the Standard & Poor's closed at a new record high today. We can see that in this candle here and that is at 26.5150. And the same is true for the Dow Jones Industrial Average. After trading lower for three days after hitting these tops, you can see that it has traded to a higher point, 24,500, but that was of course on an intraday basis. And so when we look at these collective closes here, we can see that without a shadow of a doubt, today's on a closing basis was the highest close on record for the Dow Jones Industrial Average, up 117 points on the day. And traders, one of the net results, of course, of the risk on environment has been the prevalence of a return of a stronger dollar. Really, ever since it hit these lows in September, we had a couple of bottoms that came in, 
only one small correction, but we have seen this market track higher. Of course, it hasn't been able to go back to 95 recently, but as you can see over the last week, week and a half, we have had the dollar going higher, now trading above its 50-day moving average. And traders, those involved in Bitcoin were up for a wild ride today after yesterday's historic climb, climbing to above 17,751. That, of course, is according to Coinbase. That was our high yesterday. Our close today was 16,397, putting it down about $500 on the day or a net loss of about 2.69%. And traders, the wild ride that was experienced today in Bitcoin can be seen as expressed in this daily candlestick here. It is certainly a hangman in terms of the candlestick identification, but the wild ride can be truly seen when we break down today's activity. And you can see that during the day, the market hit these highs at around 16,000, traded as low as 13,000 that in an intra bar low genuinely stayed at around 14,000 until its recovery. So we can see this market has gone through some tremendous peaks and valleys all within a single trading day. Traders, yesterday I touched upon the fact that I started the gold forecast in 2009 and it was based upon the belief that there was something big that was about to happen in gold. I believe that the same things are in play with these cryptocurrencies, specifically Bitcoin. I believe that we are on the uh, edge of a new world in terms of currencies. And why cryptocurrencies in the first place? It is the first time we have the technology to actually create a, not a fiat currency, but a digital currency that is global. And I think that that is the key. We can't think of this just as limited to the United States or limited to Europe. It is something that can reduce the borders and really uh, change the way people transact business globally. And I think that that's one of the, the biggest things about it. And the blockchain technology itself, which simply put, is a ledger in the hands of multiple people, and that's what Bitcoin mining is all about, is creating or verifying these ledgers, is something that keeps it transparent. So that rather than having a ledger in the hands of a bank or a government, the, le the ledger is in the hands of everyone. And that transparency is also good for the cryptocurrencies. One question you might ask is, well, then why Bitcoin? There's all of these other currencies out there, these cryptocurrencies out there. And the simple reason is this. It has become widely accepted as the prominent currency. And I try to look at an analogy like the Internet. When the Internet first formed, they began to use HTTP as a designated way they wanted to actually go about uh, creating pages and things, it actually isn't the best technology for it, but it was the most widely accepted and people had begun to utilize it. And therefore, it came to be the way that the internet was built. I think in the same way, Bitcoins will continue to hold the edge in terms of being the most prominent of these uh, cryptocurrencies. And lastly, with futures beginning to trade on Sunday night on the Chicago uh, Board of Options Exchange and then the following week, the 18th, on the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, I believe that, that that will probably reduce the volatility that we have seen in these wild price swings that we have seen once trading begins and there's good volume and open interest. This has been Gary Wagner, wishing you as always good trading. We'll talk to you on Monday for another daily update and review. Bye-bye.